Thank you for coming, and uh, thank you, Nick and Dion, for being here and sharing your insight and inspiration into this labor of love. Since we're probably all starving, I'll cut it off there and open the floor for, uh, for questions. Is Roatan a peaceful and sturdy oasis, or what made you guys decide on that as a location? Nick, you want to take that? Sure. Um, I've been a diver and a snorkeler ever since I jumped in the Southern California waters and looked with a mask at like 11 or 12. So, okay. Um, so that was the initial reason. So, oh yeah, no, there's, it's not immune to the hurricane um, season. Um, and there's even earthquakes occasionally, not big ones. It's not like here, but um, I can remember we had the foundation poured on the first building and there was an earthquake and, and you know, I was back in LA and, and, and I remember being nervous about finding cracks and they didn't find any cracks in, the, in everything that we poured, so we got lucky. So this being the eighth um, tropical island project, stretches back to before I was born, right? What, do you remember what the first one was? I do, yeah. Here maybe you go. I could, maybe I could say a few words. You know, since this film was made, we discovered we actually worked on 10 islands. And I wrote a book called The Ten Islands of the Neutra Practice. Uh, the first one was in 1936. My father did a project for a um, wealthy man by the name of John Nicholas Brown, who founded, his, his parents founded Brown University in Rhode Island, and he had a site on uh, an island called Fisher's Island in Long Island Sound. And so he commissioned my father to design a very large house on that site. A couple of years ago, we went to a um, showing of a film that was made by the granddaughter of this man, she had never seen the house itself. She completely did the work through f family photographs and through uh, video clips and things that they had been saved over the years. The house itself was destroyed by fire in 1976, and that was before she was born. So she did a, a film, a very touching film about this, and we saw it in, uh, in Palm Springs. Uh, it was called Windshield, and if you get a chance to see it, it's worth seeing. Uh, one thing I'd like to say about Rotan, um, we worked on many different places, and this was one of the few where there was absolutely no checking by any authority while we were building this building. We entirely relied on the contractor to do the right thing, and I realized that was a pretty scary thing because how do I know where you place steel, you know, to pour concrete, and how does the steel in the columns has to be integrated into the slab? All that stuff was completely, and there was nobody to check, so we don't really know how well it was built, <laughs> and we haven't had a we haven't had a hurricane to test it yet either, so we're kind of shaking in our boots, as hoping that everything is going to be fine. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll never forget. Uh, being in the middle of the project and at the beginning we were like, okay, we're going to build this to 150 mile an hour hurricane and it's going gonna, it's gonna to withstand this. And right at, in the middle of our year and a half of design, yeah. the Dominican or Cuba had a 200 mile an hour hurricane <laughs> and my dad's like, okay, 200 mile, he just upped it and I was like, wait, this is like this is like the Richter scale. There's no linearness to this. It, it's going to be like 18,000 times more expensive, too, to make this just 50, you know. Anyway, it, it's, it supposedly will withstand that, so we'll see. <laughs> is it completely complete? Does somebody live there? Wait, it's a complex question. And have you sold the property? <laughs> <laughs> um, Would you like to buy it? The, it's the, yeah, yeah. the magic of Hollywood has made you feel like it's complete, but it's not complete. It's, it's still, I mean, in my defense, 
a little patio area for out di outside dining became the third building that you do see some structure of in the video. Um, and I have a sound career, I'm an audio person, so then all of a sudden I was like, well, wait a second, where am I gonna put the studio? So that's gonna be the third building. Um, and I've also been building a new studio here in LA, which derailed progress in Roatan, which I've just now finished. So there's one unfinished building in my life that's actually finished. And you can see that combination of exasperation and humor on my, on the, my face when I'm like, yes, I'm ready for this to be done. Um, which, ten, year, ten years later. Ten years later, exactly, wow. exactly. Some things take time. <laughs> right? The studio, does it mean you plan to live there? Or, or my feeling like it, after all I've been through with the project, and even, even if it hadn't taken as long as it seems to be, um, it would be a shame to build a family legacy house and then sell it to somebody who wouldn't, you know, so my intention is to leave it to a relative, or it'll leave it to a relative and it'll, it'll stay in the Neutra clan forever would be the, would be the hope. 